Hi, it's Paolo. Uh, so this is Ideas from Master Lean Part 2. It's been almost a month or perhaps a little bit more, actually a bit more than a month since I last met him. These are some notes I had from after. So the first, the big thing that was in the first video was about how to um, tell the quality of tea just by smelling. And I found that I, when I remember, it's a very good uh, thing to do. So I thought I'd just demonstrate it again so that I remember, you can remember as well. So here I have uh, two samples. This is Ivo's and Sean from a small tree and this is from the same area from an old tree. So let's smell them. Yeah, the smell, you know, there's some nice sweet, we, sweet Ivo smell. But kind of stops around here, doesn't go very far. The old tree one. Yeah, this is noticeable. It, like the smell actually go up here. So it's really not about the density and the intensity of the smell, but it's about how high it goes up in the nostril. Um, a little bit like when you're smelling uh, agarwood incense, you don't want like a strong rough flavor, but you want something that is kind of more ethereally going up. Yeah, and this is also smoother than the other one. What's this is not rough either, but I suppose by smoother we mean like one more um muscling calls it one upward flow uh of the uh, up on the nostrils without going so much to the sides. Oh by the way, as usual, this is what I understood from what he said. I'm sure there's gonna be mistakes. Wisdom is this, mistakes are mine. And some things actually I'm still mulling about as well. Uh, so, you know, take this as a more exploration. Take this as kind of like ideas that you can play with, not as like the finished product of things are like that. Okay, let's smell a couple more things. Here I have some 8582 chunks, sold as 1980s, but there's no way. I think these are 90s at best. Let's see. Well, besides the fact, uh, this is how they look like. Uh, besides the fact that there's a bit of storage flavor. Yeah, like there's a bit of smell here, but it really doesn't go very far. And here I have the 2001 uh, Chen Hao Yivu, which is a very, very good gusho. At least that's what I think by drinking it, but let's smell it. Hmm, yeah, it goes quite a bit more far. Uh, actually, not as far as the old tree tea. Then again, there is some paper, so hard to say, but um, it certainly goes more far than A502. It goes more far than the young tree, um, but the old tree sample I smelled before was still uh, the winner. Not by much. Okay, so I demonstrated again the smelling. So I think the idea is that you just get used to it and you keep on doing it. You know, like right now you go and get some samples, uh, you know, try to contrast them like that, like factory versus what's meant to be gushu. And yeah, you can just smell, see what the quality is. The idea is in this way, you don't need to try so many teas, but you just smell the ones that you do want to try. Um, okay. Then he also has something, something else about smell, which is, he thinks this about taste as well, but anyway, the smell is like distinctive one taste. There's not different ones. Um, we'll come back to that, I think, in the terms of taste. Then something quite... Okay, well, so what I describe right now, I don't think anybody that thought about it would just question it. But here's something a little bit more controversial that I heard from him, but some people would not think that. So actually what's best in tea, the taste of tea is one unified flavor. So not complex, not what we call complexity, many flavors, but one. So in this terms, a single bush, a single tree is the very best. And uh, he says this would apply to, obviously to everything from Wui uh, to Puer. Um, yeah, this is interesting. It's not, I don't know that I necessarily thought about it like that. Um, in a sense, particularly when we come from maybe the wine world uh, or the more like kind of tea sommelier world, complexity is a good thing. Um, 
But I also think that sometimes complexity goes, for example, in terms of aging, something that's more dry and clean store will keep more complex. Uh, perhaps the higher quality, perhaps the complexity is a side effect of, uh, you know, it's kind of like a sign of quality because it indicates dry storage, but not a sign of quality and taste. Um, I haven't made up my mind about this, what I think about it. However, in practice, it's not such a big deal because, how to say, when the tea is very, you know, like when the teas are very, very good, um, it, it never came to my mind, oh, you know, this is very good, but it's a bit too complex or it's a bit too one taste. That's never really been a consideration. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Um, then... Oolong has the best processing so far, it's not been uh, surpassed by anything else, and fair enough. And also, all good teas, like all really, really good teas, stays the same. Uh, I can definitely see the point in this last one, and particularly when they are aged, there are some characteristics, I'm gonna go specific in them, but yeah, there are some characteristics that yeah, do taste the same. Personally, the reason why I drink poor is because I cannot drink so much tea, I'm very sensitive to it. And with Pu'er, there is a very good balance of both old tree, which means the session will last a long time, has got quite powerful cheese, so it keeps me focused for quite a lot. And at the same time, the price is really not so bad. Um, I mean, compared to Wui of the same quality, the prices are much better. And I think Master Ling got into Liu Bao, which, you know, about 20, 30 years ago, the prices for very old Liu Bao were really, really cheap. But at the moment, actually, they still, when I was in Malaysia for a long time, Liu Bao I'm interested in is 80s and before and with clean storage. And at that point, we are already at over a dollar a gram, if not much over. And actually I can find poor that give me much more satisfaction around that, um, around that level as well. Um, also because Liu Bao normally is not all three, that's the key problem. Um, but if one doesn't have much tolerance to tea, what a lot of Malaysians do, it's, uh, you know, they just drink Wui and Liu Bao all day, and then poor maybe not so much. Well, in any case, the bit that we agree with is all good teas are the same. We got that. Um, all right, so good tea, how to tell good tea by taste? Um, just looking at my notes. So, a few things. Um... So the average tea touches the tip of the tongue and then stays there. A better tea touches the whole tongue, a better tea goes down in the trough, and an even better tea doesn't even touch uh, the tongue at all, it just goes directly to the throat. And attached to this, connected to this, there is how high the tea goes in the palate, so how high the splash is. Um, another way of putting it is, how strongly and how fast does the tea explode in the mouth? Now, the kind of tea we drank with Master Lin were really, really good. We're like really top quality. And yeah, it's true, they do have, you know, never mind whether they're Liu Bao, Wui, or Puer, they do have all this quality of. It's not quite like drinking tea, it's more like a very tasty water liquid. It's kind of like it's you don't even realize it's in the mouth because it's so overpowering and conquering everything. But if you look for it, the taste is everywhere. And at the same time, when you drink it, there's no roughness. Like, it's not like, and you need to swallow it. But it's more like, you take a sip. And before you know, it's kind of all flow down. So there's this idea of, well, connected to this as well, there's this idea of like how moist the, the tea will make your mouth, how salivating. But at the same time, you know, some poor can be really, really salivating, but they also have quite a bit of roughness to it. So this salivation quality, but without the roughness. The other characteristics are how sweet the tea is, including the returning sweetness, and also the aftertaste everywhere, of course, as I was saying. And particularly, we, he did say, but also I did notice, that some teas are very special in comparison to others, because actually the very, very best tea are kind of really so subtle that if you just drink those you might not think there is anything special about it and in fact some teas that feel more rough uh, can have a stronger presence in the mouth but then when you really start to drink tea a lot or you drink one after the other um, you really do see that 
uh, yeah, there's something with a more explosive presence in the mouth and that feel very good. Actually, they're a little bit rough. And just to be clear, what do we mean by rough is kind of any sense of throat constriction, any sense of astringency in the mouth, any stranger overly sour in the mouth, uh, any too strong tingling around the mouth as well. Um, a little bit of it could be okay, but like too strong everywhere, also rough. Uh, roughness can come from anything from like poor material, uh, not enough age, pesticides, poor storage, uh, all sorts of poor quality problems go into roughness. Uh, let me see if there's anything else in this notes. No, I think I think that was that. Um, yeah, and this kind of idea of like roughness and like clean and flawlessness and like at a very high level, it's kind of assumed like we didn't talk so much about it because I am quite used to teas of this quality, but I think to a certain ex to a certain extent, if you're not very experienced with poor or with tea in general, or even if you are, um, it is good to drink like what you think is like medium quality tea with uh, what you think is very high quality tea and pay particular attention to this idea of roughness or flawlessness. So flawlessness meaning the lack of roughness, roughness and also um, strong aftertaste, sweetness. In my experience, and I think in the experience of most experienced tea people I meet, um, more and more as you drink tea, it's not so much about having the one strong attribute, uh, you know, for example, strong soupiness, strong sweetness, strong thickness, strong aftertaste, but it's about not having faults, which means enough of all these characteristics and also um, no roughness whatsoever. Right, this was my uh, best interpretation of uh, the things I heard from him. Um, yeah, take it more as my interpretation of his ideas and not necessarily his ideas uh, faithfully translated because, you know, we had about seven, ten team meetings and that's not enough to learn. So I'm sure I, whatever he said I and whatever he served me, I drank to my own experience. Cool. Well, anyway, I hope that was helpful and uh, it was helpful for me to finally put this thing down and I'm going to try to... I. I naturally pay attention to this roughness thing. I think it's something that when it came, you know, the more I drank tea, the more something I pay attention. But um, this thing about smelling tea and really train your smell, something I want to uh, really, yeah, consciously pay attention to. All right. Hope that was helpful. See you soon.